Yeah, she's got a grenade. She's got an RKG, Russian grenade. She's saying to the kid. You say a woman and a kid? You got eyes on this? Can you confirm? Negative. Your call. They fry you if you're wrong. You know, Martin, I'm, I'm a veteran, man. You know that. You know, I, by the loosest definition, you are. Martin, I was Martin. You know, I was a National Guard, man. You know, I got. <laughs> hey, man, I got a little bit of that PTSD going on too, man. It was hard. It was yeah, hard. Yeah, you in the, the the Great War of Advanced Warfare. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you laugh, man. I'll, you need to pay me my respects, man. It was hard what the service I did. Wait, waking up early. Couldn't have lunch at, at at couldn't have lunch at noon. Had to wait till one or two p.m. Yeah, you did more before nine a.m. than most people do all day long. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, didn't let me go until four o'clock, boy. Ooh, I suffered, man. I suffered, boy. Don't hey. even, man. Don't even don't even let me go back to my my, my Boy Scout days, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shit, trying to sell them candy bars door to door and getting turned down. Ooh, ooh, ooh man, I can't take the stress. Ooh, ooh, man, I can't talk about it no more. <laughs> I didn't do two, two tours in Nam for you to just make fun of this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nam, what Nam? That, that Nam you make when you eat? Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Try, I'll have two plates of Nam. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> hey, man. You know what? You, you go ahead and laugh, but I relate to this film. You know, all the shit I had to suffer, man. Yeah. Put my time in for my country. Yeah, you, you, you pretty much a cousin to this guy right here. I pretty much am. Pretty much am, man. I that's my that's my fellow veteran right here. You know, my brother, my brotherhood right here. And I'm talking about for this film. Now, this is Clint Eastwood's latest movie right here, American Sniper. And in this movie, this deals with Chris Kyle and his autobiography. He was a U.S. Navy SEAL whose sense of duty leads him to become one of the best and most dangerous snipers in the world. Hell yeah. In the world. Over a hundred kills, man. Now when you you know, everybody think oh. and I know the rest of you on Xbox going like, Oh, I got more than that. <laughs> no, these, are, <laughs> these are actually real kills where you have to actually do something like not on a couch. You know, I'm gonna swat one of these dudes right now. <laughs> talking that shit. No, you know but the thing is, you're thinking, Oh man, this this boy's a badass, man. Yeah. Shit, that's a real American hero right there. People, it don't come without a price. Oh, no. No, first of all, he, he was so into it. He kept leaving his family, and he was risking his family and uh, risk losing his family because they just were losing him to the wars that he was going to. And also, he was losing his fucking mind. Yeah. I mean, this, guy, this is a guy that's seen so much, so much action. I mean, you don't kill 100 people. I don't care how bad these people are. You don't kill 100 people. And not have that have one little unless, effect I mean, on you. Yeah. Unless you're a psychopath. Yeah, unless you're a psychopath. Any normal person feels something from killing people. You kill somebody even though, you know, you were, they, they, they it was justified, they deserved it, they were trying to take you out, it's, you're still going to feel something from it. To quote and, one of Clint Eastwood's own movies, to quote his own character, you take somebody's life and you're taking about everything they have. Yeah. And you know, it's like shit. It wasn't until Clint Eastwood said that shit, I was like, God damn, boy, that's deep. <laughs> yeah. So, I, 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 you know, I, I can't be no superhero no more. <laughs> I can't be no big. I wanted to be the Punisher at one time. No, I was man, like, you no, can't be the Punisher. I, I can't do that, man. <laughs> no, man. And, and that's the, see, that's, that's the great thing about how this movie starts. Because it gets you to think, oh, man, this American sniper. You think you think you want to see some real G.I. Joe shit. Yeah. You know, oh, man, this guy is an American hero. This guy, you think you really are going to see something about a badass. Well, you do. And you do no, you do, you do, but in the thing is though, is that that's what the movie wants to pull you into at first. And the movie's not even about the movie's not about him being a sniper. I mean, well, you know, at his core it is, but really what it's about is coming back home. Yeah. And and either being so into having he this guy has a sense of duty to a fault. Yeah. I mean he can't he can't he's addicted to like someone say, you have a savior, com a savior complex here. You you think that when you leave, he can't save anybody. You right. know, he's always thinking, I'm here, and meanwhile, I'm living, and people they're over there dying. Plus, you know, it's it's him living with the idea that like every moment he's not there, he's not stopping one of his fellow soldiers from being killed. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is that we can sit up here and we can argue the the morals of war. We can sit up here and say whether what he's doing is right or what he's doing is wrong. But the bottom line is, is that this is a person who committed himself to doing something that nobody else would do. True. Got bigger balls than you or I. Yeah. Together. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I mean, the fact that he passed SEAL training pretty much says that. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's it and on the one hand it's you look at this and you say man that's noble and then you get to the point where you say man this sense of duty that he has yeah he could pass seal training because it's almost he has a disturbing level of patriotism and yeah. sense of duty true and, and and that's uh and and see the movie when you when you're examining a character like this who has to who has to calculate every fucking shot that he's about to make because he doesn't know sometimes if he's killing an innocent person or not. We sit up here and we all we're fed is, hey man, you know, thank you for your service. We're, we're, we're fed, we're fed manufactured patriotism. Sure, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for giving to your country. Meanwhile, these guys are thinking to themselves when they come back here, they're like, man, you just don't. You don't know. know. You, yeah. you, you, you just. It's almost to a point where you say that and they're just like. You were just trained to say that now. You you know, t- uh, television. Yeah. You know, the media has taught you to say this. You don't know what the fuck is going on over there or in my head right now. Well, it is the kind of thing where, like, you you watch this and you realize, hey, saying, hey, thank you for your service, it covers so little. A more appropriate response would be, thank you. Please don't go back. You, you've done enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, and, you know, that's fine. Now that's fine for that that kind of patriotism, that kind of talk. That you know, a, a lot of that right now goes to what I always say. It goes to this point of this like this golly gee whiz type patriotism, mm-hmm. and that's fine for World War Two, man. You know, World War Two. You know, those the, that it was an older time. It had a it had a kind of a closer sense of what the war was about. In Clint Eastwood, when you think Clint Eastwood, you're thinking Republican. Of course, he's still feeling that mm-hmm. way. No, Clint Eastwood has delivered something more like Vietnam. Where yeah. people came back, didn't know what the fuck they were doing, uh-huh. don't know why they want to kill all the time, don't know right. why people don't appreciate them more, don't know what's going on in their heads. It really, this movie, it's a dark film that kind of fucked me up when I saw it, watching Bradley Cooper here. Yeah, watching, I mean, we see him um, <clears throat> in his more innocent time, and we follow him as he goes into the military for the SEAL training, yeah. and what he goes through when he's out there, and trying to have a family and be gone you know, in that shit for so long to the point where his wife is like telling him like, look, I'm having a baby and I, I can't, I can't keep doing this. You, I, if you go on a, on a second tour, we're over. Oh yeah. Next scene, his fourth tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck you bitch. <laughs> I'm married to my country, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you just feel for the guy the whole time. And you're just like, please let him make it. People don't realize right now what you're watching here. You're not, you think that you're watching something patriotic. You're actually watching Full Metal Jacket. Mm-hmm. You're watching Platoon. You know, you're watching all you you're watching uh all these movies that come back and say, you know what? War is just war is just fucking horrible, man. It's yeah. just weird. You yeah. know, and even when you leave it, you come back and you're all messed up. And that's what I really that's what I really admire this 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 movie for right here. And I mean, war is just fucking insane. Uh you see him in some of these scenes and it's crazy because it's this is how clear cut. I mean, this is how gray it is, and not clear cut it is. At one moment, you might be ready to sh- to to protect the kid who's about to get a drill in his head, and you can't even save the kid. Mm-hmm. Or the next, you might be about to put a bullet in a kid. Uh huh. You know that evil becomes blurred. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going on. It it fucks your mind up. Man, talking about this, I'm confused right now. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this <laughs> shit, shit is giving me PTSD. Well, it's also a kind of thing where, like, especially if you're on that on that side of like. Man, we shouldn't even be there. We got to get out of there. And the more you see, you kind of like, man, it's just not that. It's not that simple. It's 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 like, really, would you just walk away from something like that? It, you know what? And it's not that simple. And the, and I want to I want to. That's a good point that I want to bring up after we watch this clip right here because this is my favorite clip from the film. There's a dude who comes up. Who, and by the way, this is this is Bradley Cooper's film right here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Brad, Bradley Cooper is carrying this movie. Bradley Cooper. Well, he he produced it. He you know he was in love with the with the book with the, this guy he's based on. He gained the weight for the role. Yeah. He got got swole for yeah. this man. And and Bradley Cooper, you know, he's got the accent for it without sounding uh without sounding caricaturish of a southerner. Um, and the thing that he pulls across uh, that he pulls across the most is that man. There's a guy that he saved at one time. That he ran into mm-hmm. and the guy's coming to him and saying hey man thank you if it weren't for you i wouldn't be alive and bradley cooper's like if you don't get the fuck away from me <laughs> like, <laughs> like who are you again yeah, who, who the fuck man, are you? you you changed my life if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be here and you are yeah yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now fuck off 
Yeah. Are you Chief Chris Kyle? Yes, sir. My name is Mads. Um, we met in Fallujah. You saved my life. Yeah, and <laughs> tell you what, man, why don't you, you get the fuck away from here, right? <laughs> he's like, he's, he's like, hey, man, hey, too close, man, too close. Back the fuck up. I mean, really, that look on his face, I would start backing up. And I'm like, I don't know what I just said, <laughs> yeah. and I really don't know how you' about to react to it. Just wanted to say that you you saved my life back in Fallujah. I'm about to end that motherfucker too if you don't back the fuck up right now. Oh, That's so, it. yes, sir. We were. Stuck in a house until you came in with First Marines. You were the one that carried me out. Oh, my. Well, the Marines saved our ass plenty of times. Uh, how are you? You all right? You holding up? Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful to be alive. Yeah, okay. It what you want? Been, cool. It hasn't been easy. I know how the fuck you know. I know. A lot of guys lost more than just a leg. Mm hmm. Uh, so you're going to blame mm -hmm. me for that, you too? You some friends? Well, that, too. But I'm talking about the guys that lived. You know, they made it back, but they're just not. Just not back, you know. They can't seem to get right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why don't you come down to the VA sometime? The guys will love it. They all know who the legend is. My family thanks you for your service. Yeah, whatever. Okay, man. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that scene is powerful because it shows you this is the guy who's telling him that you saved my life, and the whole time he's mentioning that, it's I'm sure Bradley Cooper's character right here. I'm sure he's like, he's thankful for the guy to be alive. And yeah. He's, and he's and he's grateful for the guy coming up and giving him the respect. But the whole time he's thinking like, yeah, that was a real fucked up day, man. Right. <laughs> you know, man? Like, man, why, why you remind me of this shit? It is like, like, this, the, like he has so much he's trying to put behind him. And he, it's like, yeah. how could he? And, and some of the hardest parts to watch are when he's back home trying to come back to being a dad and having a normal life. Yeah. And, yeah. And, it brings it home to you just like how difficult that is. I know. Like it, it ain't just like, okay, well, I'm home now. Forget about all that. It's like, man, that's just too much you, to put out of your head. You know, it was funny because he was like, he was like, fuck, man, I was having a good day. Too. I know, right? You know, this was the day I actually didn't have that shit on my mind at all. You had to walk up here. You crippled motherfucker. You about to lose that other leg. Son of a bitch. I mean, I feel bad, but it's an amazing performance right there. And, the reason now, you, you know, you, you look at this and you got to give credit. And I have to show this other clip because, again, this is somebody who doesn't give this kind of uh, performance without having somebody else there to empower it. Mm -hmm. And you can't have this kind of performance until you see the effects that that this person has on other people. See, what's the name? Sienna, C Sienna Miller. Sienna Miller plays his wife. And it's. It gets just gets to a point where you feel bad for his, for his wife. Oh, yeah. Because his wife is just I mean, she's beyond even crying. She's just like. I don't even know what the fuck is going on with you anymore. So what are you, in Germany or where? No, I'm here. I'm, uh, <clears throat> no, I'm stateside. Excuse me? You <laughs> <laughs> see that confusion? Yeah. She's like, wait a minute, you in, you back in the country after nine months? Of you? And I'm just getting a casual call from you like it ain't nothing? Let's see, I'm, in, I'm, I'm on the East Coast. You at a bar all the way on the West Coast right now? Are you fucking nuts? What, what are you doing? Not being with you right now. I guess I just needed a minute. Chris, the, the kids are dying to see you. It's been nine months. I'm coming home. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Babe, come home, okay? At this point, don't you think, why don't you just stay there for a little while? Tell you what, baby, there's no rush right now. <laughs> you take all the time you need. <laughs> to laugh because that's a very again a very powerful performance i mean i'm, I'm watching bradley cooper right here and you just you feel <laughs> and i feel sorry for my man because you, you you're watching him here and it, it you really <laughs> you really do see the pain on his face yeah i mean it doesn't help us sit up and laughing at his ass but you know you really do see that bradley cooper is great like, at bringing that pain right see, there man. this is why i didn't want to make this call in the first place <laughs> <laughs> god damn can i just have a beer on the other side of the country <laughs> shit 
<laughs> Get off my fucking back. I know, mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, this dude is losing it in this movie, man. I wish I had that clip. I wish I had that clip, but that dog was doing nothing. <laughs> Dude, but there's a clip in here, and I just got to describe it to you. I don't have a clip, so I probably shouldn't say anything. But there was a dog that was just playing with this kid. You know, the dog doing nothing. Dog doing nothing. Right. And right, Bradley right. Cooper just. You had a flashback to where a dog was chewing on a dude. <laughs> Excuse me for a moment. I'll be right back. I need a prop for this. Uh oh. Mojo, you're. you're no, no, not Mojo. <laughs> Mojo. Mojo can't take cues. He, Mojo, he's 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 too much of a diva. Mojo, your best your best me skills are needed right now. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's a part in the movie where this dog this there's a dog playing with a kid and the dog is dog is just like this. You know, hey, hey, how you doing it? And and Bradley Cooper gets up and he's like, Get the fuck off him here. Get the fuck and he, that dog that dog's looking like Mojo right now. That dog's like, hey, wait a minute, man, shit, shit. <laughs> It's funny how those things always happen when it's like a, a picnic with a lot of family and people from the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. That's the perfect setting for somebody to lose their shit and everybody to just kind of stop in the middle of their hot dogs and their no, soda. No. And it's like, even, even that dog was like, y'all going to get this motherfucker off me? <laughs> <laughs> what y'all looking at, help? <laughs> Mojo's like, hey, look, I ain't that dog in that fucking movie, motherfucker. I'll attack. <laughs> All right, nah, buddy. Nah. All right. I'm, thank you. Uh, Da-da! In scene. In scene, da-da! Mojo! All right, Mojo, say goodnight, everybody. <laughs> da, 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 da. And that was the great Mojo. The great Mojo, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, get your ass out of here. Damn it, did you, did you throw in? <laughs> Shit, hey, man, my, 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 my PTSD kicked in. <laughs> I thought I had a grenade in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> But, but no. Ah, excuse me, people. But no, the, the now. One of the re- one of the main reasons why this movie works for me is because it actually took me back to one of my favorite Clint Eastwood movies. Can you take a guess to as to what that is? No, don't no. I tell you, you don't even want to just take a guess. Well, I was like, I gotta play the game later. You know, come on, save yeah, that right. shit for the trip. Yeah, exactly. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it takes me back to uh, to Unforgiven, man. Oh, okay. And the reason why it takes me back to Unforgiven is because Unforgiven was uh it's, it you see this guy and it's it's a hard position for when you watch Bradley Cooper in this movie because Bradley Cooper you see what it's doing to his mind. Yeah. You see what it's doing to his family. And even if you're on the side of war where you say, I don't get war, man, it's crazy. But you see that people like him are needed. Yeah. Clint Eastwood really does well with conflicted characters like that because because uh Clint Clint Eastwood you know, play, uh, you know, uh, playing the lead role in Unforgiven himself. Yeah, he was that kind of he. It was that kind of character study too. Oh yeah. You know, he was a. Uh, this guy did a lot of bad things at one time. He he told you I'm a straight up asshole. Yeah, but it, put it behind him. But he put it behind him, and and they have to, you know we had to bring it back up for you know one more time. But the whole time you're looking at him, you're like. Yeah, you're kind of an asshole and somebody I would really wouldn't want to be around. But don't you get the feeling that the West was a lot better with him than without him? <laughs> you know, I'm not so sure about that. It's just that he tells us what an asshole he was and we can see it. But then we have Gene Hackman, who we see right then and there is a huge flaming asshole. Yeah, and it's like, listen, if we got to bring an asshole back to get rid of this one, then so be it. That's right. Look at Clint Eastwood. Those, those kids back there, like y'all going. This is gonna be you. Y'all keep fucking with me. <laughs> now go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> they scared as hell. Look at the boy. Like I told you, quit fucking with daddy. But you know, it's funny how we had that that question about if there's a director who could do work that's just so bad they can't come back from it. Mm-hmm. And Clint Eastwood has been on a roll of doing bad movies. Yeah. And to that yeah. point where we kind of like, yeah, man, I think he's just. He's, he's 80. He's just, he, just, he don't have it no more. He can't do it. But apparently, if it's a war movie, he, a, he, if, he, he can dig deep and bring it back. If it's a war film, he knows what he's doing. And by, and by the way, we're talking about a lot of the psyche in this in this movie right here. We're talking about the mind state of, uh, of this guy, Chris Kyle. But it also must be mentioned here that don't think that there aren't some cool war scenes in here. Now, it's harsh. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, by, go, by cool, it, it, you know, it's more like authentic, puts you right then it, it in the scene there are some there are some amazing scenes in here and, and it puts you in a place where you don't want to be no that is the, and see for like modern war films i think that a, a, that's the way it should be it puts you there you're impressed with the filmmaking yeah but you like you, the whole time is playing and you you and you you're in the middle of action you, you're just kind of like i want to go home i 
don't want to be here. And, and this, then, this and Fury both did that for me. Yeah. Where it wasn't like, hey, man, war is cool. I want to blow some shit up. It's like, I want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, shit. I came home that day looking like Bradley Cooper. I, I was, I went to a bar and <laughs> looking, looking like his ass. <laughs> I'll be home on red ass. <laughs> but, but man, uh, you know this. It's a, it's a great film, and it's got great cinematography. It's got great direction for the war scenes. Great. It's a, it's a great character study, and. Uh, I, I praise this movie mostly. I have nothing but really good things to say for this film, except for one thing. What's that? Uh, I really, that, the, you know, we talk about how there there are some movies that Clint Eastwood has done where he's just they're just not that good. Yeah. And there have been a lot of movies where Clint Eastwood was the he suffered from being a real heavy handed director. Right. Man. Uh, he, he just came out with Jersey Boys. Yeah. That humor was just a little bit too heavy, man. Yeah, a little too too broad, and yeah. it just wasn't hitting. And the movie seemed like it was missing a lot of points. And and I and there's a certain part. There's a there's a, a whenever they focus on a certain character in this movie, I think that it's not directed all that well. It's uh, the Olympic sniper, the Olympic uh, medal winning sniper that oh. they go up against. I I felt like that in the movie. There's a there's a he. Uh, Bradley Cooper's character almost has a nemesis in the film. Yeah, there's a, a sniper that he can't see. Well, that character is important because it's one of the things that keeps bringing him back. It's like, of all these reasons to go back, it's also like, I got to get that guy. I got to get that guy. Yeah, and, and every time he's like, all right, maybe I can let it go. They're like, man, that guy just took out three of our guys. He's like, God damn it. it, it it's on me then. I got I to gotta get him. And you know what? I got that. I got that, that you need to go there and find that guy. But the, at the same time, because that guy is so mysterious to Bradley Cooper's character, Chris Kyle, I thought that. That character should have been mysterious to the audience as as well. We shouldn't have seen as seen as much as of him as as we did. And you know what? And if you're gonna do it, direct it better. I just thought those parts <coughs> they felt like they were directed by another person. Hmm. There, there's one part that sh we've been seeing the guy the whole time, so there's no big reveal. They've been talking about him. We yeah. know who he is. Then all of a sudden, when the movie's almost done, the sniper picks up. I'm talking about the the the, uh, the enemy sniper, the Olympic gold winning sniper. He picks up his he picks up his weapon. He runs out, and as he's running out. Again, be a very heavy handed. Clint Eastwood pulls the camera to, to a picture on the wall showing him at the Olympics and he zooms in on it. And I'm just like, that's sitcom shit, man. That's TV I direction. I wouldn't go that far. I would. I wouldn't go I, that far. Martin, you know what? We are two, man, we are enemy snipers exactly. right now. You know who's going to take out who first. Man, it, 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 you didn't see that at all? No, no, no. I, did, did you hear man, what I said? Did, did what I, you criticize Clint Eastwood? Did you hear what I said? You know, I hear what I want to hear. Say I hear what you want to hear. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> what I'm saying is, I see what you're saying. I don't even disagree with it, but it wasn't a big deal to me. And I don't think it's as bad as, as you paint it. See, you don't hear what I'm saying. Because I'm not saying that it brought the movie down for me. I'm saying in a movie as good as this that Clint Eastwood has directed, where he's coming back to rare form. Mm -hmm. uh, man, this could have been, this could have been great. Like this could have been on my my top ten list. And I still don't know if it is or not. Yeah, wait, wait. That, just the, that those couple scenes keep it, it from being a couple from being great. It was to several. You? It was about three or four. I to me that's a to, to me that's that seems like man that's that starts that's pretty deep. That's something that starts at a story level. That's not just one or two scenes. Mm. Like I said, you shouldn't even seen that guy uh, for most of the film because mm. he's not seeing him. Why should we see him? He should make, remain mysterious. So we're like, yeah, who the fuck is it? That's the whole thing about being a sniper in a movie, man, is that who is doing this? Who well, is this faceless, dangerous person? Okay, listen. What you're saying, that is a way to go. Mm. I don't know that that is the only or best way. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? Trust me, it is. I mean, no. you said you don't know. I'm telling you. No, I'm telling no. you. I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know if you're right either. <laughs> you just don't want to admit it. That's all. And I also, I also got to give uh, some points off because, and I don't know if you noticed this, and you're going to hate me for it, but me and Hyde talked about this after the movie, and I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking about it. Uh, there's a part in the film here, and let me find it. Please. Let me find it. Nothing good comes from you talking to Hyde. Man, no, let me, hold on. Because <laughs> he sees these movies five times in a row. Man, let, me, let, me, let me find this. Matter of fact, he did a screening for it the other day, uh -huh. and like it screwed up. It didn't work. The, whatever the download happened was wrong, and they had veterans in the audience ready to watch that movie. Oh, oh really? Well, that's not his fault. I know, but you know how he internalizes and gets stress, stressed out over these kind of well, things. Well, I think he likes the movie, but he came out. He, and I was thinking the same thing. I'm gonna give him this. Wait a minute, hold on. I'm gonna give, okay. I'm gonna give him right, this. You right. probably okay. You probably think, look, man. You probably see it too. You gotta give me credit for this if you did. 
everything in this movie is so authentic. You know, the, the weaponry, the war, the, the, you know, the tone. And then there's one scene where Bradley Cooper has to hold a baby, and that's the fakest ass baby, man. I mean, even Bradley Cooper, like, really? You gonna give me a doll? <laughs> That shit looked just like this. I mean, the, the head was moving, the arm was moving just like this. That shit was either it was dead or that or that was a doll. And 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 I said, "Did you see that fucking doll that he was holding in the film?" And I said, "Yeah, man." I said, "That shit was rubber." Cuz you know, man, babies, you know, either they kind of dangle or they move, and that shit was shaking a little bit like stiff rubber. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> When's the last time you held a baby? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> a baby like Bradley Cooper got. <laughs> Plastic baby. Man, you, you don't know. <laughs> man, watch. You think, you think about babies you see on TV. Man, watch that shit next time. Which, is, which actually are animatronics. <laughs> well, they, they, that, they, they must have ran out of money right when it came for that baby. <laughs> they, couldn't hi, they couldn't hire a real baby. They couldn't do no animatronics. They couldn't do no CG. They sent somebody down to Toys R Us and came back and said, we you know, got it. Maybe the real baby they did it with kept throwing up. <laughs> and they had him hold a, a doll as a placeholder <laughs> until they can get another one. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe Bradley Cooper was getting mad at the real baby <laughs> he's like, this motherfucker don't shut up <laughs> tell you what we'll just give him a fake one because <laughs> he's about to strangle this son of a bitch <laughs> he was way too much in the character right there <laughs> shut up shut the fuck up shut up <laughs> 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 shit was kicking in man <laughs> well boy i'm gonna tell y'all something man i i really do i really do admire this film i really do admire this film and and you're going to be surprised at what I say here. Look, it's not hard to admire Bradley Cooper for this. Because if y'all remember, Bradley Cooper had some work leading up to this. He had some practice leading up to this. L Bradley Cooper has played a lot more crazy people than you probably remember. Th uh, take, for example, Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah. Please stop yelling. I'm not yelling, Mom. I'm just frustrated because I should have my fucking wedding video. Ah! Ah! I already looked all over there. I remember watching this. I was like, "Damn!" That, not, that's when I knew he was crazy. Oh yeah, I know. It, it, me too. It was just like send him back to the home. Let the whole neighborhood wake up. I don't care. Yeah, take that motherfucker. Take him. Take that motherfucker back to the mental hospital. The movie opens up with him leaving, and it's like, "No, you you need to go back." After the first night, you're like, "Okay, that's yeah." First, this is the first fucking night him home. This is like Halloween. The night he came home. I just gotta watch the rest. I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's had practice man yeah he's had practice no you know bradley cooper oscar nomination i don't know if he'll win i need to think about it but it's clear it's clear he's gonna get sure. an oscar nomination that's it's done it's done but uh my big hero in this movie because he's always been one of my favorite directors which is by which is why it's been so heartbreaking lately but clint eastwood sure clint eastwood. jesus christ <laughs> Say something else about my movies, Martin. Like Thanos. Motherfucker. Damn, yeah. <laughs> Shit, you know, Thanos will even look at that and be like, God damn. <laughs> Tell you what, you sit down right here. <laughs> You've been here longer. You're fucking right. <laughs> yeah. Where are the Avengers at, God damn it? Clint Eastwood, 84 years old, man. Clint Eastwood, 84 years old. This man, this man right here. He brought it. He brought it, man. This... This man is a uh, he. He is my hero. He's a. Uh, well, most people, well, most people would direct. Uh, you know, one movie a year. Clint Eastwood directs two. I True. mean, you know, you forget that he had. Uh, you forget that he did Jersey Boys earlier oh, this I know. year. And that's that's how he looked after Jersey Boys was done. <laughs> <laughs> that's him reading the reviews. <laughs> I ain't want to direct that sissy musical in the first place. Oh shit! Anyway. Fuck a fuck a Jersey boy. It's like Clint, you directed Jersey Boys. Well, like, who, why would that? Why was that even brought to him? Yeah, what made you think you want to direct a Broadway musical looking like that? I mean, unless it was they couldn't find anybody. They took said they told him like, listen, we need somebody for Jersey Boys. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do we'll, that shit. We'll let you do American Sniper. Let you. Uh, mm. Yeah. And you know what, man? Uh, this right here. Do one for us, we do one for you. Yeah, you know, and, it happens all the time. And you know, and I wonder if that's what happened. I wonder if it was because that he couldn't get that done unless he did Jersey Boys. Yeah. And why they got Clint Eastwood to direct that shit, I don't. I have no fucking clue at all. But uh, it's an amazing thing for a guy who's eighty four years old to do what he did. And so you know, I, I, I think that's the real driving force behind this film. The real talent behind it. I mean, you know. Well, I, honestly, man, uh, Bradley Cooper was the one who really pushed this. Oh, was he? Yeah, was he? Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, it was it was all his doing. You know, everything about getting it done and and everything. 
I know. He's like, damn, Corey, can I get some credit, man? <laughs> yeah. Shit, you sitting up and sucking clean these woods, dick. What about me? Because he was saying how he read about Chris Kyle, and he was just he was just all about. I have to honor this guy. Oh, I have really? to make sure I can do this right. I have to. I have to practice. I have to. I, I'm. I'm committed. I'm going to gain the weight. Get this okay. together. All right. All right. Well, hey, you know, I salute both y'all. Yeah, both y'all. I give this movie a a, a, a very high full price. <laughs> okay, I think you say very high matinee. I was like, God damn it, man. <laughs> no, man. No, 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 no. What, what made you think I was going to give it a matinee? No. Sometimes you just, anytime, anytime we're talking about a movie and you go like, well, I have a couple of things to say about it. It's like, all right, here we go. No, there, no, there's no, his man. out. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. I get, I, this is a return, truly a return to form for Clint Eastwood. This is, this is the, this is the director I fell in love with, with, uh, 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 Letters to Iwo Jima and Unforgiven. So yeah, absolutely. Those yeah. are my my two favorite movies by him, uh, as well as this one. Yeah, I give it a high full price. Also, it's it's that uh, it 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 combines elements of so many other movies that I really really like or love. Some we talked about even uh, around this time when we saw Lone Survivor. It it gave me that kind of <clears throat> feeling to it, and yeah. um and it also has this um this moment <coughs> in it where it's just it's just like the biggest gut punch in the world. Like God. Damn, you know there was a moment where a bunch of the people who saw the movie, who were there to 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 screen it that day, they were they just stood outside and didn't say shit. Yeah, uh, there's about five people that stand out in front of the theater on yeah. the corner, just just looking down on the ground. <laughs> shit, I was somebody even came by and proposition someone. <laughs> <You know? laughs> hey man, can I get a party? You know, but uh, but yeah, it's a it's it's a great film, and I mean it's and it really is one of one of Bradley Cooper's uh one of his best performances mm -hmm. to date. And you mean I I can't look at Bradley Cooper the same way after this anymore. I mean, I, every time I see that raccoon, I'm be like, no wonder he's so mad. <laughs> Shit, he got PTSD. <laughs> no wonder he's so cranky. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, leave me alone. <laughs> you don't know what I've seen, man. <laughs> you haven't been through the shit like me. <laughs> that's that expression. <laughs> that tell me that's not that expression yeah, it right is. there. It totally like, is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Martin. Martin, you know what? Oh, bless oh Speaking no. Speaking of the shit. Oh, no. Let's put you through it, man. Oh, Martin. Oh, wait. You didn't ask people to call in, so I guess Oh, we'll uh, no, no. I'll get to that. Martin, we need to get you a gold stir, Martin. A gold stir for the people. Yeah, Martin. You know, I'm trying. I'm not going to try to go too hard on you so that you don't get some, some uh, PTSD yourself. I don't it can happen, to, though. But it can happen, I mean, man. You know, I have a lot built up from all those other quizzes. You know, you've been through a lot of quizzes, I've Martin. I've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. You've held it together. Is this the day that Martin snaps? Is this the day that Martin just finally tells me, Fuck you, car shit! <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. You now, Martin, you know, this movie is about people who have that post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm-hmm. We've been calling it PTSD this whole time. You used to call it shell shock. You used to call it shell shock. You used to call it fucking crazy sometimes. That's but true. Yeah, that's true too. Although, you know, that usually goes with homelessness. <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a lot of movies out there, a lot of recent movies too, where they've touched on that subject and you probably didn't even know it. But it counts. It counts. So Martin, the way we're gonna play this game right here is I'm gonna take a character from a film. Okay. And I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to quote them as if they were they were seeing a therapist. And describing to them what their post-traumatic stress disorder was like. Okay. And by their description, you're going to have to guess that character or that film. Okay. All right. All right. You got that? I got it. Don't sound easy, but I got, I got what you're saying. No, it's never easy, Martin. War is hell and trivia is too. <laughs> All right, Martin. In heaven is cold. Shit. Are you drinking fluids? Uh, no. You got water? I'm not you, doing You got a that. whole case of water in there. I know. Miss Nesmith's me is water. She don't let me drink oh, that Oh, shit. shit. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 don't you let her see that. Oh, oh you better watch out. She, Maybe I can scrape the label yeah. off. She's going to come in and shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going to work. She knows what she knows is hers. She knows her. Yeah. She knows the shape of her water. <laughs> yeah, trying to cover your track right now. Hell no. You better. Maybe oh, I'll just. too late. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you better eat that shit too. <laughs> Don't spit it out, eat it. <laughs> shit, the best thing you could have done is just left the label on, pull, put, put tap water back in that shit. Mm. Then she would have been like, "Hey, this shit was already open. Who did this, <laughs> Corey?" All right, let me go ahead and check the Gmails right here. All right, let me see. Let me see who was first. Who was first? Master G. Master G was the first one we got. Master G lives here in Austin. Does he? He wants to meet us on on a on, on, a, on, on, on a Sunday. Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. I think he wants to come by on Sunday. So before he comes over here, let's see if we can win him a little prize. All right. Show him we're good people right here. And, they, show him, and you can pay him in person. Exactly. Exactly. Hello. Master G. 
How you doing? Oh, yo, what's up? Hey, you uh, rocking to the sounds of the Master G. Nah, hey, man, how you did You act a little surprised like we weren't going to call you. Well, uh, y'all said the, uh, the uh, caller ID said California, so. Okay, that, that happens all the time. Happen. Be prepared, man. Be yeah. prepared. If, if we if we're doing a show and you get a, a number up that, oh, that but he's in Austin, that's so I, he thinks that we're gonna call from Austin. Okay, number. all right, all right, fair enough. Damn, I'm glad Martin's yeah. playing this game for you and not you yourself. <laughs> t- I can tell already you would lose. So you're here. For, you're, you're in here. You're here in Austin, Texas. Yeah, I am. I'm in uh, Pflugerville, actually. Oh, well, then you're not in Austin, Texas. Yeah, not technically not in Austin, Texas. And how's the meth out there? How's the what? <laughs> <laughs> this time of year, it is, whoops, it is, nah. Yeah, hey, man, you're 19 years old, am I correct? Yes. Oh, uh, shit, we got to yes. take his, Yeah, he's laughing. You got to take his ass over to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> all right, man, let, let, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can win you a soda pop now, all right? <laughs> now, all right, hey, bye. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, now, Martin has uh, been told how the rules of the game will go. So, Martin, <clears throat> you got it? Yeah. We don't need to repeat anything, right? No, no. All right, Martin, then let's go ahead. Come on, Martin. Oh, look at, come on, Martin. Come let's on, see. Martin. Dun, dun, dun. All right, Martin, here we go. Martin, your first description is, I get back, and it's like, no one cares, Doc. I'm hot as a firecracker, and I'm going to protest. Damn it, I forgot to bring my music up for you, Martin. Martin, I get back, and it's like, no one cares. I'm hot as a firecracker, and I'm going to protest. Martin, you had a little time to look at the screen right there. I read it for you twice in a row. You got any idea what this is? No. N- none at all? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Martin, I always tell you key words, man. I know. And people, you know, I can never tell when Martin's playing for suspense, oh. so I don't know. Martin, before you say it, I'm going to give you one more. Just, I'm, I'm going to read to you one more time. Okay, keep, keep the words on the screen. I get back, and it's like no one cares, Doc. I'm hot as a firecracker, and I'm going to protest. Martin, keywords there. You just want to put out something? Toasties, I bet you got it. Come on, man. Y'all know. Martin, go ahead. Just put out something. Put out something. Say anything. Come on, Martin. I got nothing, man. Martin, Come on, Martin. Martin. Oh. You know what makes me mad when Martin doesn't even try? You could have yelled out anything, Martin. Edge of tomorrow. See, you're so close, Martin. You, you, you know, you, you're kind of aware of what this is because you said Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. Born on the 4th of July. Oh, well, I guess I did. Well, the whole firecrack 4th of July firecracker. Jesus, okay. <laughs> Protest made me think of born on the 4th of July, but the firecracker thing was was killing me. Born on the 4th of July, Martin. Okay. Born. All right. Okay. Master All right. G. All right. Don't okay. worry. It All usually right. takes some sometimes okay. it takes him a, a, a question or two to get okay. into his groove. All right. Okay. You got it? Yeah, I got it. I know he, he's old. It takes him a oh. while. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, suddenly I'm so old. I'm just, I don't remember just, anything. Oh, you don't want to mess with that, man. Oh, you wow. you, you My don't remember so far. You don't, no, 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 Martin, Martin. I think Martin, I'm having no, a stroke no, now. Oh, you might have. Get, Where you, am I? You might have given Martin a, uh, a little what bit is of this? a senality of the oh. Alzheimer's. Oh, no, yeah. no, Martin. <laughs> What's a movie? Um, <laughs> well, sometimes they forget, Martin. They get, they get, they, they get into it so much that they forget who they fucking with. They Y'all better do. leave the talent alone. You, Martin might just throw the game for you. I, I didn't realize, Martin. Come on. Come on. Master man. G. Come back to my side. Master G, all I can Help do is out. just read the next question, and Martin will do what he do. It's out of my control now. You got to be careful how you talk to these people. Here's the other one, Martin. Doc, I feel like I'm drifting and everyone's coming down on me. I just want to take out this whole town. Doc, I feel like I'm drifting and everyone's coming down on me. I just want to take out this whole town. I see something rolling on up there in that head. No, you don't. <laughs> Put the words back on the screen so I can well, read This is a hard it. one for you. Hell yeah. Doc, I feel like I'm drifting and everyone's coming down on me. I just want to take out this whole town. I can I tell you what, I'll give you a hint. I'll even put another word to give you a hint. Okay. Doc, I feel like I'm drifting and being harassed and everyone's coming down on me. I just want to take out this whole town. Okay. Get that help all right. out a little bit? Maybe, maybe. All right, all right. Martin, real quick before the music ends. Uh, uh, first Blood. I should, you know what, see, I made it easy for you. I made it easy for you. I probably should have given you that clue. Yeah. But there we go. Okay. Yes, it is Stallone. And this time, Martin, he's fighting for his for his life. Martin, if you read down there above the title, it's the Stallone Zone. <laughs> Stallone Zone. <laughs> I just saw this. I, said, I, saw, I saw that picture. Like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's like it's not even a box cover for a DVD, for a DVD or anything. Damn, he looked like he's got like like he's seen out right now. Look at yeah, him. Like, 
Ooh. Oh. See, that's how Mark's going to be looking. You keep messing with him, Master G. <laughs> I don't remember anything now. <laughs> All right. We're off to a good we're off to a good start here. All right. We only have two more keep that we got to get. We got two more. Now, we got four more questions, but we need two more answers to get correct. Martin, are you ready for the next one? <sighs> Let's see. Yeah, you are. You got no choice. Martin, I tell you, Doc. Yeah, he's ready. He I don't, ready. Boy, if you don't be quiet, let me get on with this game here. I tell you, Doc. I don't even feel like I fit in this time. I feel so lonely. I even want to hurt my best friend. I tell you, Doc, I don't even feel like I fit in this time. I feel so lonely. I even want to hurt my best friend. Martin? Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Master G. I might have him with Put this the words back on the screen. I tell you, Doc, I don't even feel like I fit in this time. I feel so lonely. I even want to hurt my best friend. He's like Corey Coleman. <laughs> oh shit, man! Don't worry, Master G. He might just be playing right now. You know, to to keep the audience on edge. Martin, just give me something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. <laughs> see, see, Master G. He man. plays with you like that. He plays with you. Look, he's he's already getting mad at you, man. Martin, shit. <laughs> Don't you know anything? Be on this, man. <laughs> you were right, Martin. It is. No, I seriously did not know to the very last second. <laughs> Master G looking at you like that right now. What the fuck, Martin? Hey, you won, man. You won. That's kind of like Mark Wahlberg. Kind of. I'm going to hurt Captain America, bro. Where is he, man? I know he's right here, bro. But, yeah, the music's playing everything. It's like, man, fuck you, Martin. Shit. <laughs> He already had in his mind that you got that wrong. I know. <laughs> but meanwhile, he didn't know. He didn't know either. Did you know that one, Master G? No. Nope. No, he didn't know. Yeah. Nope. Even though I love those movies. Yeah. Not, not, you don't love them enough to know what the fuck they hey, are. But thank movies. you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's kissing your ass. Uh, th thank you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, oh, come on. Now, he gets, <laughs> now he's respecting his elders. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I know you're going to talk shit once the game is over. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You better fucking get my prize. <laughs> right, right. Oh, man. <laughs> nice going, Pops. <laughs> All right. All right. Damn. Hold on for a second. I got to. Shit, my balls are crawling up on me. Hold on. All right. Here's our next one. Call me paranoid, Doc, but I think he's sleeping with my wife. My own flesh and blood, man. Call me paranoid, Doc, but I think he's sleeping with my wife. My own flesh and blood, man. My own flesh and blood, man. All right, all right. Okay, all right. I get it, I get it, yeah. <laughs> all right. Toasty. He ain't that old. What? He's, he's, look, he's still talking that shit. I know. <laughs> and I know this one. Or, or do I? Or do you? Or do you now? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get that Stallone look in your face? Uh, do I know it? <laughs> yeah. All right, Martin, you know it. Let's not keep. Let's not keep my man on. on, on, on my guess anymore. is the movie Brothers. Martin, as we just talked about it yesterday. Martin, you are correct. Which I never actually saw it. Oh, you didn't even see it? No, this. I didn't get to see it. And that's the one where where Tobey Maguire he leaves to go to the war and uh, and there comes Jake Gyllenhaal creeping uh -huh. creeping up he can't he ain't even left the house yet look at him he's already trying to grab that ass is he gone yet <laughs> no he's right in front of me shit <laughs> can't you wait shit get the fuck off me right now Just hold on you know he's poking an ass right now right, with, right. with his heart on come on man <laughs> duty calls bro alright you won Master G, you actually have won the game right now. You have won the prize. Yeah. Yeah, but hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I got to pay taxes on it? No, no, nothing like that, man. No, no, no. The prize is yours. You can walk away with it. You have no strings attached. Oh, but wait a minute. Hold if you on. you have balls, though. But, hey, Master G, you've been talking a lot of shit about Martin. You know, you sat up here no, and no, called him. No, no, love, though. I feel no, 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 hold on, no, hold on, let's, let's just play, let, 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 come on, man, let's cut the bullshit, you were talking shit about Martin right here, Martin was sitting up here winning prizes for you, you yeah. talking shit like you a man, now let's see how, you you know, like, like, like you, like you smelling your nuts, let's see how big those nuts are right now, and this is me, look, I, I, I like you, Master G, you got character, you got integrity, and you're a smart kid, that's why I say, you know something, 
I say stick around and show everybody how much of a man you really are and play for this last question. However, if you do, Master G, and Martin gets that question wrong, you get nothing. This is what we call the all or nothing round. So, hey, man, look, you do what you want to do. I know if I was doing it, I wouldn't be no punk. I'd stay here and play. Uh, you know, plus. I'm, I'm I, I, Martin. Martin, you think you can handle one more? One more question? Here's the thing. No one has ever backed off of doing that last question. No one. You has would ever. be the first. Ooh, you'd be the first. Oh, the hell no! I ain't gonna be no bitch. <laughs> My man, that's what I like to hear. That is what I like to hear. I, I, I admire your courage, man. All right, all or nothing round right here, people. If Master G does not get this, or Martin rather does not get this and this 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 question right, the Master G walks away with nothing but you've been doing pretty that ain't gonna happen that ain't gonna happen that ain't gonna happen all right let's go ahead and get to our last question right all here. right do you see reflections in there by the way where in the screen right there no okay all right all right jesus I just want to make sure you weren't cheating okay all right it's so bad doc i can't remember a thing but what i do remember has me beating up everyone i see it's so bad doc i can't remember a thing but what I do remember has me beating up everyone I see. That's something to be said for quitting while you're ahead. <laughs> Don't let him fool you, Master G, just yet. Uh-huh. You know, he does this. He does this. He likes to, see, he likes to scare you a little bit. All right. I think he's going to come through on Put it. Put the words up back up there. Let me see him. Again. It's so bad, Doc, I can't remember a thing. But what I do remember has me beating up everyone that I see. What about you toasties out there? Do you know? Because it looks like Martin's a little bit confused, but Martin might be joking. Wow. Martin, what you got? What you got oh, for us? Just, just say anything. Just say anything. Answer. A history of violence. What? A history of violence. You would have a history of being wrong sometimes. Damn. No, don't let me even tease you like that. Damn. No, Martin, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The answer that I was looking for, the born identity. Oh. The born identity, man. You know, he can't remember anything, but he gets little, 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 little chunks of memory that brings him back, and he knows enough. He knows enough to beat people's ass when they start to mess with him. God, man, that, that fits a whole lot of things. Does it? Yeah. Does it? It does. Yeah, that was real generic, you like, like man. The, the Come long. on, that wasn't fair. You know that <laughs> oh, wasn't that fair. Oh, shut up. You just trying to agree with him. Long his good night. <laughs> All right. You know what? You know what? How do I want to work this? How do I want to work this? Should I let the chat decide whether he gets it or not? Sure. What? That's democratic. On, that's democratic. You know what? Reach into your heart. <laughs> Look into your heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Somebody somebody actually had it. Somebody said born. Look at that. People like born identity. The born identity. Oh, born wow. born is a good one too. People already had it. So you know what? People knew uh, it. People kinda people were guessing that oh, come on now. All right. Yeah, yeah. People Yeah, some people already had it in there. So I, I gotta Damn. go with it. I gotta go with it. I'm so sorry. Hey, but look. Look, 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 Master G, you still come out a winner because you know something? You live here in Austin, Texas, and you get to you get to actually enjoy the pleasure of our company live this weekend. You emailed me saying you want to hang out, right? Yeah, yeah, I want to come see y'all. I'm be going back to San Marcos next week, so, you know, I thought I'd, since I'm here, I'd finally get to meet y'all in person. Ma- uh, Master G, if we got time, this is what I'll do. If somebody can give me a question before we in the next couple of minutes, I'll ask him that. Oh, okay. I'll, if the chat can give me a good question in the next couple of minutes, I'll ask him that and give him a chance to to, to actually uh, to be fair this time. Okay. Since some people split whether I was fair or not. Okay. I'm back time, Martin. Okay, I, I got somebody gave me a what, question. What is it? I I, I'm, I I got a question for you. Somebody gave me. If you get this one, then you get it. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What does Marcellus Wallace look like? You what? know this one, right? Yeah, the answer is what? <laughs> Come on now. I, I'm asking you. I'm, no, I'm not asking Martin. I'm, asking, 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 I'm you. asking you, Master G. What does, oh, Marcellus, what does Marcellus Wallace look like? Uh, Uh-oh. I don't think he's going to get this one. Mm. It's too bad you don't have a Samuel Jackson clip ready. <laughs> <laughs> a bitch? 
Oh, you know what? He got it. I'll, I'll take that. He got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bitch. I'll take a bitch. <laughs> Although Samuel Jackson would argue, I'll take a bitch. All right, there you go. You got your fucking prize. There you go, man. All well, right. What answer were you looking for? I'd be the. Yeah, isn't there what? I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would have yeah. even taken what are what? he's black and he's bald. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, but a bitch, I'll take. It. So. <laughs> All right. Do they speak English and what? <laughs> All right. My man got the prize. There you go, my friend. All right. We'll see you this weekend, okay? Yeah, just just get back to me on uh, you know, the information and whatnot. Okay. And uh Yeah, I'll keep in contact. Okay, you high as hell right now. I right? know. Or just lay back about to fall asleep. Oh, no, just get back with me. <laughs> get with you. Contact, hey man, I'm right. just cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. Shit. All right, man. <laughs> All right, then, Daddy. Yo, we'll see you this weekend, brother. Babe, come home, okay? You know, we, we, we miss you. Okay. <laughs>